Hi, let's take a look at the TS100 portable soldering iron uh, and we'll compare it to the brand new TS80 which I did in a previous video if you haven't seen that linked in down below. Now, I... <laughs> You are hard pressed to find a more rabid fan base than what there is for this TS100 soldering iron. As I mentioned in the previous video, it's been out for quite uh, some time and I actually got this as a loan. I just realized that uh, da David just reminded me that he had one. So he bought this in. So let's take a look at the TS100 and mostly to compare it to the new TS80. Let's go. Now, first of all, the TS100 is a little bit uh, cheaper than the new TS80. It's uh, around about, you can get this for like 50 US dollars on AliExpress delivered, but that's with like nothing. You know, that's just the iron and a single tip, I think. This one actually comes with oh, what feels like a very nice uh, silicone lead with the DC uh, barrel jack. Because the first major difference between the two irons is that one has a, the TS100 has a DC barrel jack and the new TS80 has a USB-C. So you can probably buy kits with uh, this one included and it's got the uh, bullet type connector as used on, um, these are just, uh, these aren't, I don't know if these are normally supplied. These are banana jacks just conveniently happens to fit like that. Uh, you can hook these of course directly up to a LiPo uh, battery pack, 12 or 24 volts, because this thing actually supports, I don't know what uh, DC 5525, that's probably the model number, but, or something. Um, on the other side, it's uh, 12 to 24 volts, so 17 to 65 watts nominal. So this will not, presumably, will not operate on less than 12 volts, but I've yet to uh, try that. And in the box, uh, yeah, I believe like the standard tip is the fine point uh, conical like that, which I do not like. Um, you know, okay, if you're doing like, you know, really small SMD work and stuff like that. But out in the field, you want something bigger. But we don't have a chisel tip. We've got a well tip uh, like this. So um, once again, great for SMD drag solder and stuff like that, but uh, not really um, the same as the uh, chisel tip that I got for the TS-80. But the TS100 has a huge range of tips available, including the standard uh, uh, chisel and variations of that, um, like we got on the TS80. And we've just got some, uh, like, important, once again, just safety instruction. Like, there's no actual manual that shows, like, how to... Uh, use the menus or anything like that. So it's just a quick start guide. We've got a little um, stand. That's, oh, there we go. <laughs> How do you use that? What do you prop it up on? Um, Bueller? Bueller? I guess we have to like bend the leads over like that to turn it into a stand. Okay. And we've got the same Allen key we got with the TS80 and also the uh, ground connection. Soldering controller. <coughs> So up close, you'll notice that they're basically the same form factor, same length, everything else, except the new TS-80 beats it by a country mile because it's all anodized aluminium construction. Very nice, superb build quality. The TS-100, eh, just chintzy plastic. I don't like it. You know, it doesn't instill a lot of confidence in me. Grounding point on the top here, the TS-80 has it on the bottom, down at the back. That's probably the best location for it. So absolutely no contest there. In terms of uh, uh, plugging in the tips, the TS-80, it uses the 3.5 millimeter uh, phono jack like this, and it just clips in too easy. And the TS-100 uh, doesn't, it uses sort of like a, it, like I don't think that's compatible with any other uh, uh, tips on the market. It's just its own thing with the contact. It's, you know, it's six of one, half a dozen the other. But that one also just plugs in like that. But you'll notice that the tip, that the grip to tip distance is much better on the TS-80. So when, when you're soldering, you do want the shortest possible uh, distance between your grip like this and the tip, because then it's much easier to control fine work. The TS-100, it's like, it's not nearly as good, and at least the TS-80 has sort of like a little uh, finger ridge at the end like that. So, you know, it sort of stops you fingers a bit coming off. The TS-100 doesn't have anything like that. So uh, by far, the TS-80 is the absolute winner in build quality and uh, usage ergonomics. No doubt about it. No contest.
And as I said, the uh, TS100 are uh, significantly cheaper. It's about 50 US dollars as opposed to um, like over 70 uh, US dollars for the TS80. But uh, in terms of uh, build quality and everything, it's, you know, it's worth the extra, no doubt. But of course, the biggest difference between the two is that the TS100 uses a center positive DC uh, barrel jack like this. It's got a separate uh, USB so that you can interface to it and uh, hack the firmware on it. The uh, TS80 uh, uses a USB-C, but uh, it strictly requires a quick charge uh, 3.0 compatible battery pack from 9 to 12 volts. So unless you have that quick charge compatible pack like this one uh, here, for example, um, you've got absolutely no chance of operating the TS-80. So the TS-100 is by far the more uh, versatile instrument in terms of being, uh, you know, ability to power it. And that may be a differentiator in the field. But don't get excited about the micro USB on the TS-100 because if you plug that in, it just pops up with uh, configuration. It allows you to flash the firmware. I believe you can get much better uh, firmware for this thing. It's open source or whatever, and people have written better firmware. But I'm not going to be using that uh, hacked firmware. If you're like me and you carry around a USB um, uh, battery pack like this battery bank, the TS-80 is a vastly better option and more convenient. The TS-100 is just absolutely useless. But if you're carrying around uh, LiPo battery packs or other power sources and you don't have a uh, USB battery bank, then TS-80 is useless. So six and one, half dozen the other. But the first major problem with the TS-100 is, look at the TS-80, right? These um, tips just slide in there beautifully like that. The TS-100, you might think it does the same, but wah, 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 let's power it up. Wah, sense error, because you've got to get out the stupid bloody Allen key to loosen it off so that you can fit the damn tip in. Unbelievable. Fail. So out in the field, not only do you have to dick around with this pissant little bloody screw in the thing, but oops, I just lost the screw out in the field. Well, are you screwed out in the field? No, because it would probably still sit in there like that. And you can take it out permanently, I guess. And it, you know, it, it sort of... It doesn't lock as good as the TS-80, but it would still hold itself in there. So I guess, you know, it, you might just leave the screw out entirely. But yeah, I, TS-80's better. And I've got uh, the TS-80 from, of course, the Quick Charge 3 uh, power bank. The TS-100 from the uh, a 12 volt DC 3 amp uh, bench power supply. Ta-da! Go! Go, go, go! The, uh, the TS-80 is set for 350. Sorry, I don't know what this one's uh, set for. Well, the TS-80 is um, certainly heats up much quicker. Look at that. No contest. And the interface on the uh, TS-100 seems to be uh, the same as the TS-80. So we just hold down that and then we can adjust the uh, uh, by default 10 degree increments. So we'll set both to uh, 350 and see what happens. Got my standard uh, lead-free Loctite solder here. Let's give it a burl. Put that on there. It is a smaller tip, granted. So this is 350, but it's not. It's not that terrific. Wow, that's that's not impressing me. There you go. Finally got in there, but I know the tips aren't directly equivalent, so please forgive that. But there you go, the TS-80 just uh, churns through that like butter. So, yeah, um, TS-80 so far. Now, let's actually see what uh, power draw we get here. Now, I know it is 12 volts. This is not the full capability of the iron. So, well, you fanboys, don't get uh, all rabid on me. But, oh, geez, it doesn't do well at 12 volts. Let me tell you, and it's not a bad tip. The, uh, wow. It's just, it's hopeless. There you go. So we are getting our 19 watts or whatever. And so it's on par with the TS-80. We were able to see that the TS-80 could get up to 22, but it's normally 18 watts. And uh, so there you go. You know, for an equivalent wattage, geez, the TS-80 is doing better. It's set to a nominal 350. There you go. You know, it's near enough. Let's quickly compare the TS-80 there. And I do believe it was actually higher, yeah. Yeah, it's a good 10 degrees higher. But there's not a huge difference in there, but so far, the, the TS-80's beaten the TS-100. 
Okay, let's try an identical uh, ground plane here. Got to be wielding two irons. Got to make sure I don't burn myself. Make an absolute fool out of myself once again. Uh, we're at 350. So let's. Uh, oh, I should rotate that tip. Sorry. Look at that. It just it churns right through that like it's nothing. Let's try the TS100. Wow. Nah. Nah, it is hopeless. I know the tip's not the same. I know. It's not the same thermal mass tip. It's not the same diameter tip. But it just... Ah, no, it just doesn't work. At 18 watts, equivalent power to the TS-80. This thing just cannot do it. Friend, have a look at that. The TS-80 here has a bigger thermal mass where it matters right up the end like that. So that's making all the difference in this case. And if I have a look at uh, the other TS-100 tips on uh, AliExpress, I see that they're all a similar design. That the, the TS-80, you know, it looks like they've redesigned it, and the element is, like, right up there. That's the hot end. Whereas it seems to be, like, all in here um, for the TS-100. The TS-80 looks like it's a better tip design and more efficient. All right, so let's try this again. I've now got 24 volts, okay? So this is its maximum capability here. And let's see if it can uh, do this. Ready? Once again, at 350. Let's do the same one over here. Let's do the same pad so that there's no... Once again... Ah, oh, nah. Oh, there we go. It's start. Oh, it's starting to... Start... Nah, nah, it just, oh, the, yeah, it, it is starting to, but, oh, this isn't feel -a vision but that is pretty stiff, okay? It does get the job done in the end, right? But I'm, I'm not impressed with that. The TS-80 is better. Even at 24 volts, holding that on the pad is still only drawing that 22, 24 watts. So, same as the TS-80. So, so much for the 65 watt. But granted, I do expect the TS100 to perform better if I had a Meteor tip on it. But when I've got it in there and there's actually sold a mass like on there and it's like flowing and connected, that's still got really a low uh, thermal resistance through to the pad. So in terms of that, like a thicker tip will perform better like when you put it on initially. But uh, this tip should still have worked pretty well at that low angle. I'd expect a similar performance. Both set and calibrated to 300 degrees uh, Celsius. Both of them seem uh, pretty bang on around 300. Let's do... Right, so we, you wouldn't normally solder a ground plane at this temperature, so don't complain, okay? But we can actually get... We can do it. It's not great, but it is sticking. Got the same thing happening here. Again, this is at 24 volts, so I'm giving this the absolute best chance with this tip of doing it and ah oh, not as good but this ground plane is not as brutal a test as i just did on the pcb which was a, that was a multi-layer uh, pcb with uh, thermal v is going down so yeah still i i've got to call it for the ts80 winner okay wet sponge test see how long it recovers Wow, it's taken a long time to come back from that. TS-100. Seems to be better, doesn't it? Oh, no. There we go. Once you put it like that. Yep. I don't know. It's hard to call between these two. It's a quite an unscientific test, the, <laughs> the sponge test. It's the uh, variations in where it's actually placed on that and how wet it is and the pressure and all sorts of things. I don't know. Let's just say that there may be equivalent in terms of thermal recovery, you know. And by the way, in terms of uh, heat, just the time I've had them uh, run in here, the TS-100 uh, does get hotter. And it gets hotter, like, all the way up as well you can feel it whereas it, you know the, the ts80 really hardly gets uh, uh warm at all it's pretty good and because people want to see inside the uh ts100 well, once again like plastic case with just the clips there to hold it on it's just not not doesn't have a patch on the uh ts100 
80 in terms of uh, build quality. And looks like we've got uh, two board construction here. Looks like we've got our processor up on a little daughter board. Don't know why they uh, did that. A DC barrel jack looks uh, rather nice. Quite impressed by that. And these look uh, like custom mounts on here for the contacts. So those contacts uh, seem to do the business there. So there you go. It is a dual wipe uh, contact on both of them. Of course, the power one, whichever one it is, is the one that uh, matters. So we've got dual wipe contacts on either side. So that's rather nice. How it compares to the 3.5 millimeter on the TS-80, it's like, nah, you wouldn't even bother arguing over that. Both are acceptable for uh, the purpose at hand. And I won't go through the differences in the main board there. Obviously, it's going to have a power MOSFET there. It's got the uh, ST um, micro by the looks of it. Um, I think that they might be some, someone said they might be equivalent in terms of uh, firmware and like open sourceness and uh, stuff like that. So I'm not going to make any uh, comment on that. Both can be uh, interfaced by, uh, via a USB interface. You don't have to open up to uh, reprogram them. So very nice. Getting this chintzy plastic case back together it's not great it's just uh no give me the alloy one any day i hate this so the verdict on the ts80 versus the ts100 i think the ts80 edges it out i think it has better thermal performance it's got a better ergonomics better design and build quality everything about it is better really i think um than the ts100 but of course some people this is absolutely useless because you need a quick charge usb3 pack for others that like myself the ts100 is personally absolutely useless because i i don't carry around a 12 volt power source i'm not near a 12 volt power source when i need it so the ts80 is the only choice for others the ts100 will be the logical and only choice but you know, I think the TS-80 does edge it out on thermal uh, performance, but it's at least the equivalent of the TS-100. So the TS-100's, you know, 65 watts, I wasn't able to get it anywhere near 60, drawing 65 watts from its maximum 24 volt power supply. And in terms of running it from 12 volts compared to the uh, uh, 9 volts for the uh, Quick Charge 3 on here, the TS-80 beats it by a comfortable margin. So really, this is better all around. It just, come, uh, you know, it would have been a winner if they made a version of this um, with you know, the all the better thermal tip, the shorter grip to tip, tip distance, the build and design quality, but had DC barrel jack. If you had the choice between the two, or even you had one that actually combined the DC barrel jack with the uh, uh, USB-C, or maybe even that this supported the wider range of voltages, even with an adapter cable or something like that, then... Uh, it, it would be a clear winner. I mean, no one would buy the uh, TS-100 then. So, uh, look, it's <laughs> six of one, half dozen the other. Depends on your requirement of what you want. But the TS-80 is at least a match in terms of thermal performance, if not better. I'm not hugely blown away by the TS-100. Sorry. It's not the greatest thing since sliced bread. But they, that may not be the same for you. As always, your mileage may vary. It's much more robust. I'd rather trust this out in the field. Even if I didn't normally carry a uh, battery pack for this, I'd rather carry a small little uh, Quick Charge 3 battery pack for this than have this thing. Um, but, hey, this might save you bacon out in the field. It's, it's certainly, it's you know, its thermal performance is quite good. It actually does a, a reasonable job for such a uh, small direct heat iron. But, yeah, it's just the design and build quality is not the same. I, I really like the TS-80. But go ahead, buy whichever one fits your requirements. No worries. And would I recommend one of these as a replacement bench soldering iron? Well, no, that's not really their purpose. They're designed as a portable soldering iron solution, but maybe at a pinch, the TS-80, if you got a proper stand for it and you get the burn proof uh, silicon lead for it and you get the, you know, either a sponge or like a brass wool uh, wiper or something like that, maybe. But then you're getting up towards the price of like a rip-off um, Heiko FX951. Certainly not the TS-100. TS-80 is just better and only at a pinch or if you've really got like bugger all room anyway hope you enjoyed that if you did give it a thumbs up and all that sort of jazz as always discussed down below catch you next time